Thank you all for joining this session. Uh, my name is Satish Pantu. I'm the technical leader for CFD at Vitals PLM. And I'm your host for this session. Welcome you all to the seventh webinar and series on the topics of CFD. And today's topic is leveraging Siemens CFD solutions to analyze and improve heat exchanger efficiency. In this webinar, we will see how heat exchanging devices are so common in various industries and how their performance is an important theme at uh, both subsystem and system levels of operation. The outline for this session is as shown here. Firstly, I would like to take this opportunity to introduce our company, Vitals PLM, on who we are and what we do. I'm not going to spend much time on on this topic and then we will move on to, to a brief introduction to Siemens Inter CFD solutions and how they're integral part of complete PLM solution offerings from Siemens Digital Enterprise. And then we spend some time in understanding the heart of heat exchange. And finally, we move on to you know the topic of the day, leveraging Siemens CFD solutions to analyze and improve heat exchange efficiency, followed by Q&A. <coughs> Vitals PLM as a company has multiple industry experience, namely oil and gas, machinery and equipment, petrochemical, nuclear and aerospace and automotive. And we are based out of Houston, Texas. And Vitals PLM is the uh, smart expert solution partner to Siemens PLM to sell the products like Starsi Simpler, Fairmap, Next Nastron, Amazon, Battery Design Studio, Heats for <clears throat> multi objective design optimization and exploration, and Flow AFD for as a CAD embedded uh, software for design engineers. And we are a team consisting mostly of PhDs and masters having background in solid mechanics, fluid mechanics, numerical analysis, optimization, reliability, and data analytics. And we also provide engineering consultancy services. Uh, along with that, we also do automation, automation and customization projects for the companies and the organizations which are in need of them. And when it comes to the CFD, uh, why does film has uh, which capabilities by doing, uh, performing a wide variety of uh, consulting projects, uh, mostly from the oil and gas and also from other industries, process industries. And some of them are very, uh, executive projects are very challenging and successfully uh, completed for a wide set of customers and clients. And, and all, some of them include uh, physics like erosion, corrosion, fluid structure interaction, mixing and separation, and acoustic source modeling. On the marine and offshore industry side, uh, Vital Spillum has experience with uh, simulation items like jumper VIV, vortex industry vibrations, floating systems, ship dynamics, riser and pipeline, vortex industry vibrations. Okay. A brief introduction to Sim Center portfolio. Uh, CFD solutions. A center offers market leading CFD solutions for all the personas in the industry. Starting from SimCenter Flow FD, it is a solution for CAD engineers or design engineers. SimCenter Flow Therm is the solution for thermal engineers doing electronic cooling solution, simulations or any kind of thermal uh, analysis items. And then SimCenter 3D is a solution for structural engineers. Finally, there's another uh, <coughs> solution called Starsi Simplex. It's an integrated multi-physics solution for CFD engineers. So, uh, going on one level up to better understand the offerings from the SimCenter. The CFD solutions are grouped according to the level of usage by key roles in the industry, which are designers, analysts, and researchers. Starting from the left, uh, if you're a design engineer or CAD engineer, and if you're interested in doing a simple uh, or basic flow and thermal simulations, SimCenter Flow EFD or SimCenter Flow Theorem are the recommended solutions from the SimCenter portfolio. And if you're an analyst solving moderately complex problems uh, involving multidisciplinary cases like FSI, Consky transfer, electromagnetics, um, then SimCenter 3D or SimCenter Star System are the recommended solutions. On the next level, uh, for research purposes, uh, if you're an analyst or research and researcher are doing uh, uh, 
<clears throat> a problems which require sophisticated models, then the multi-purpose CFD code starts in some places the way to go. And out of these solutions, we focus on flow UD, star C simplex for the top of the team. A little bit um, uh, information about the simplex of flow UD. Uh, flow UD EFD is a CAD embedded CFD solutions, and it's mostly available on, on all the uh, main CAD environments like NX, Solid Edge, Skitia, Creo, and it's useful for front loading CFD in early stages of product development life cycles. Since it is available at native CAD level, there is no need to simplify geometry for fluid volume attraction, uh, uh, or sometimes you need to defeature some unwanted uh, geometrical aspects for the CFD analysis purpose. So you don't need to do all this um, defeaturing uh, and things uh, when you use flow UV. And with its proprietary smart cell technology for machine, uh, uh, it, al it allows the users to have a minimal user intervention for, for performing machine. And the solvers available in the flow UFD are proven accurate and robust over the years and well known in the industry. Uh, and, and the final thing uh, is the flow UFD is uh, having a inbuilt design space exploration tools uh, which, which can help the users to evaluate hundreds of designs to find better, better designs faster. On the other hand, SimCenter starts is in place is the multi-physics solution for CFD engineers. And with its uh, single integrated user interface, uh, it can help the users to cover a complete application scope uh, with a broad range of validated models for various disciplines. And when it at the CAD, Front level, uh, it's a bi directional CAD and PLM associated with it. It can allow uh, to seamlessly interact with various tools in the product lifecycle management uh, when, when you think in a bigger picture and a bigger organization. Here you can see some animations uh, uh, performed by, uh, prepared by Star System players from different industries. Uh, aerospace applications, uh, defense applications and electronic cooling and there's flow turbulent flow around the landing gear uh, booster separation and then a multi-physics uh, problem where uh, uh, the defense vehicle is entering into pool of water so all these things have prepared the start system i will keep talking about sim center we will be thinking that what exactly the sim center well, it's a bigger portfolio that combines best-in-class CA simulation, system simulation, and testing solutions, and also the design exploration and analytical tools under one platform. And all these uh, solutions work seamlessly work together, um, and uh, which can help the engineers or users to innovate and bring products uh, faster to the market with greater confidence. That's the reason why the tagline goes for the sim center as engineer innovation, simulate, explore, and test by doing simulations and exploring a wider picture of the design space. And also, you can do the physical testing with the testing solutions provided by SimCenter, uh, sometimes for verification and validation purposes. Okay, I think we had enough introduction to the solutions from Siemens PLM based on different levels of uses by different types of users. So now let's uh, let us see how the solutions uh, helped in designing heat exchange devices, various heat exchanging devices, and which is again the topic of the day. Uh, but before we do that, let's try to understand the need for heat exchange in the engineering viewpoint uh, by an out of heat exchange. The nature always teaches. Here we see something something off the topic seems like, uh, but you might be wondering what this duck is doing over the air but it can help us to brush up our basic understanding on heat exchange. Uh, so you might be wondering that uh, how the, f uh, the feet of the bird don't freeze when it stands on the cold surface. For example, a duck uh, standing on a frozen lake. So, so this is, the answer for this is not that it produces sufficient energy to warm their feet, uh, but it's actually the exchange heat, heat exchange between the cold blood carrying veins out of the contact with the 
cold surface and and the hot blood carrying arteries. It's like a counter current uh, heat exchange system, uh, which is which is there in the feet of these birds, and uh, that. So to put it in an engineering perspective, that's what exactly all the uh, engineers trying to find uh, the heat exchange between two different streams, uh, hot stream and cold stream. So with that, the key thing to focus is how effectively a given design of a system can help to do this heat exchange business between one stream to others, other stream in order to achieve a desired result. So again, in the engineering perspective, the, result, the desired result could be to eliminate the hot spots and the heaters or to, to improve the heat recovery or a heat exchange between one stream to the stream. Or uh, sometimes uh, there is, uh, if there are hot spots, it can lead to uh, having some thermal stresses in the system. So that is not desirable uh, result. So your design must, uh, uh, must avoid those kind of uh, failure uh, items like developed induced thermal stresses on the tubes and headers or any any part of the heat exchanging device. Okay, so uh, in the outline, I've, so I've categorized uh, the the topics and topics um, according to three levels: a three D component level heat exchange devices and applications, and then. And then the next level, we'll see uh, at the system level how 1D and 3D approach um, is used to uh, improve the heat exchange efficiency of certain uh, applications and examples. So here, here in this uh, uh, section, we'll see uh, some of the examples and applications uh, at, a, at a 3D component level. So in spite of the nature, so for today's topic, uh, the, these are the hand-picked topics and applications. Uh, we'll start with the shell and tube heat exchanger, and we'll see uh, how, how to model and how to set up a model uh, using the SIM center safety solutions uh, for automotive heat exchangers, and then we'll see battery cooling and how, how the heat exchange uh, from one area to other area is important in, in the in the case of battery cooling, and then and also in the case of power electronics uh, cooling, uh, how 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 important the heat exchange is important. Uh, the heat exchange from one place to other place is important. Finally, we'll see uh, uh, subsea heat exchanger application from the oil and gas and marine industry. Yeah. Um, uh, the, when, when we set up a shell and tube heat exchanger, uh, most of the time the, the primary goal of the simulation would be to minimize, minimize the failure of the heat exchangers by eliminating the hot spots and heater. Or uh, most of the time it's, uh, it's aimed to improve the heat recovery or increase the, maximize the heat exchange between the hot stream to the cold stream. Or uh, for the structural integrity, uh, it's also useful to minimize the thermal stresses on on the key surfaces of the interest. And to understand it, we'll see uh, how to set up a case in flow FD uh, by simply uh, looking at the performance aspects like pressure drop, heat exchange, and hot spot in a, a pre-recorded demo. And so in the next slide, I'm going to play a pre-recorded demo explaining uh, how to set up a case and see uh, what are the performance parameters uh, while uh, performing the simulation.
So in this video, we have seen uh, two different designs uh, with Daphne and without Daphne and how, uh, how the performance parameters like uh, uh, <coughs> the pressure loss on the cold side and the heat exchange between the hot stream and cold stream are affected by, by different designs. So this is how you can simply set up this kind of uh, heat exchangers uh, quite easily using uh, flow UFD from C center. Uh, CFD solution, CFD solution. Next item we have is the automotive heat exchanger. Uh, so uh, typically, uh, the automotive heat exchangers are uh, radiators, intercoolers, condensers, and evaporators, which are sitting um, as components and part of the underwood um, uh, underwood of the any vehicle, and they will. Uh, these are quite important components when it comes to the underwood thermal management. And all of these uh, components have a fine structures called lures on the cold gold side. So, <clears throat> so the primary goal of uh, uh, modeling these heat exchangers are simply performing simulations for the heat exchangers to analyze and improve the heat exchanger efficiency by optimizing the designs for lures and uh, lowering the pressure losses on the uh, cold side, or uh, sometimes it's uh, uh, it's in the efficiency have impact on, but by, by the location where these heat exchangers are placed in the in the complete system, and the way they are arranged in in the that's part of the complex system. Like if you talk about the engine room, the location of the heat exchanger and the the way it is arranged have it have an impact on its efficiency, and also. Um, and it's also useful to see the influence of the overall airflow uh, in uh, in judging the performance of our performance or efficiency of these heat exchangers. So again, we will have uh, one more uh, demo uh, how to set up uh, a case for uh, this kind of uh, heat exchangers, automotive heat exchangers, having uh, uh, the louvers which are which are modeled as a porous medium uh, shown in the pre-recorded demo. Sorry, uh, 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 for some reason the uh, attendees can't able to hear the, the audio in this video. So I'm trying to explain uh, uh, the demo, uh, which is uh, which, which we can see in this video. Here we see a simple uh, representation of uh, automotive heat exchanger. And typically these automotive heat exchangers have, uh, as I said in the previous slide, have the uh, plate fins have uh, louvers, fine structures, on the air side and a detailed simulation by, by physically modeling all these fine structures is 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 quite tedious task so for that reason uh, these fine details uh, structural details are modeled as a porous medium and we'll see how uh, these uh, different configurations for the slivers are modeled as porous media by taking a, a, a simple uh, characteristic uh, submodel um, to find out the uh, the pressure drop uh, uh, created can be created by this lower lower fins uh, uh, and then once we have this uh, pressure drop information uh, the the PQ curve the pressure drop versus the flow rate so we can use that information uh, and to model uh, the lower fins as porous medium. 
So here, uh, this within the flow of dissipate, you can quickly change the velocities and you can get the uh, subsequent pressure drops of a given different set of uh, velocities. And also on the thermal side, you can also see uh, how the uh, heat transfer coefficients will vary on the surfaces of these characteristic symbols of model. So you can see this uh, different versions like uh, different configuration louvers, um, how uh, how they have different heat, heat transfer coefficients in its z direction and also the pressure drop uh, in the particular z direction when there's a flow occurring uh, in certain z direction. So once we have this information, we can model them as a porous media by uh, by taking uh, the, the graphs as in input parameters uh, into the uh, uh, the model developed in the uh, flow of D. So once we have the uh, PQ data curve, we can easily get into the uh, flow of D and we can use it for modeling uh, for, for the more porous model. So, and once you have, once you're done with the input parameter setup and then you can define what are your goals or what are your, what are the output parameters you, are, you would be interested in? So, for a given volume flow rate, so one of the goal so output goal would be a outlet temperature. So here we can see how the outlet temperature is varying with uh, with respect to the changing volume flow rate. Then also you can do the parametric study by changing different input parameters. Right. So. So this is how you can efficiently set up this kind of uh, uh, modeling of these uh, heat exchanges using flow of T. And the next topic we have is the battery cooling, uh, which are part of the electric vehicles. Uh, and uh, in in the electric vehicles, which are which are run by batteries, and batteries emit a lot of heat uh, during their operation, and uh, and there's a need for sufficient cooling of the battery packs uh, in the front of the performance. And the heat exchange between the heat dissipating batteries and the cooling fluids depends on how effectively the heat is exchanging um, between hot hot uh, heat emitting batteries and the the cooling pack around these batteries, heat emitting batteries, right? And some of the cooling systems include heat exchanging devices like heat pipes, cold plates, and water cooling ponds. So here we can see uh, a flow of the uh, result, a simulation calculation where um, we see a flow around battery pack, uh, which are modeled as cylindrical uh, components, and this kind of uh, uh, the analysis are quite important uh, when it comes to the performance of the electric vehicles, uh, mainly for battery cooling purposes. And using the CFD solutions from the Siemens, like Flow EFD, uh, the users can analyze the, the flow distribution and the pressure losses on the cold side, and also it can help uh, to optimize the cooling pack design by looking at different design, different design spaces. And finally, um, it can also help to optimize the cooling system components like uh, heat pipes and cold pipes, cold plates, and also to some uh, to some extent the water cooling uh, parts configuration sizes and the shapes of the water cooling uh, parts part of the cooling system. And the next topic is the power electronics cooling. Uh, again, here um, the primary goal is to uh, cool down uh, the high uh, highly heat dissipating components uh, the power electronic components. And uh, one of the dominant failure mechanism uh, when it comes to the power semiconductor components are not just the high temperatures, but the cyclic nature of the high temperatures, uh, temperatures, and and the cyclic behavior of uh, 
the temperatures can lead to a failure by thermomechanically induced stresses. So uh, typically the power electronic cooling uh, systems involve uh, liquid cooling technology and coal plates for, for the increased power density. And here we can see uh, how effectively this uh, liquid cooling technology is based on uh, liquid, liquid flow uh, in the coal plates uh, can be can be improved uh, for their efficiency uh, by using the flow of dissolutions. So here we can see uh, uh, the snapshots. Uh, uh, the the power electronic components are um, the whole module of the power electronics are uh, imprinted onto the liquid cooled coal plate. And you can see the the channels, the spiral channels uh, inside the coal plate, which are uh, which are provided with the liquid cooling uh, fluid for the cooling purposes. The last uh, application uh, is the subsea exchanger from the oil and gas industry. Um, here we see uh, a heat exchanger, which is typical to uh, subsea applications. Uh, where uh, the production oil is at uh, 50 degrees centigrade is is allowed is desired to cool down uh, to 36 degrees because uh, because for the purpose of uh, finding uh, the flow measure the flow rate by the sensors and this uh, the components of the sensors are sensitive to the high temp high uh, temperatures so the 50 degree uh, production oil is not desirable so that's why uh, these systems involve this kind of heat exchangers where uh, you can see it consists of two planums bottom planum and top planum connected by central cylinder cylinder and and the cylinder is surrounded by spiral spiraling tubes so the production fluid at 50 degrees enters at the bottom planum and it uh, transferred to the top planum and then it will run down through these uh, spiraling uh, heat exchangers. And the, so the, the, the key objective or the challenge is to uh, maximize heat dissipation so that you can reduce the production oil temperature from 50 degrees to 36 degrees. So uh, in order to find the best design, uh, the design variables are a number of tubes, the spacing between the tubes, height and flow rate. And the constraints are uh, the height of the the whole heat exchanges and the wall thickness of the pipe. Having all these combinations, um, so um, by doing uh, design space exploration using the starches in place and heat, um, one can find uh, the top three designs, uh, which can give 33% uh, reduction in the outlet temperature from 50 to uh, the desired temperature of 36 degrees, so that it can it cannot affect the sensor components. Of the the Reduce the lower temperature, and also fulfilling the other uh, design aspects at the same time. The next one is uh, 1D and the system level heat exchange applications and examples. Um, so, <clears throat> typically uh, in today's world, uh, the with the trend of having common platform based vehicle variants, uh, it became a hectic thing for automotive OEMs uh, to make right decisions at, at, at early stage. So what I mean to say that um, uh, when whenever there's a need for a new model development uh, using this common platform, uh, if you come up, if you want to build a new design, um, especially uh, the, one of the one of the area which is uh, which can be influenced is the the front uh, the front end airflow because the you know if there is a small change in the front end grill that can have a uh, significant impact on the underwood airflow and then this underwood airflow can impact the engine performance and also the cooling capacity of uh, the passenger thermal comfort systems uh, because if you see typically in the vehicle under underwood uh, engine room. So you see, uh, after the grill, you have uh, uh, these all the radiator condenser and evaporator sitting uh, next to each other. And uh, whenever there is a uh, uh, the entire vehicle design change, so it's uh, the all these OEMs uh, they try to 
evaluate several dozen uh, alternative configurations by linking the new de new design for the grill because out of the new design for the vehicle with the existing uh, components for uh, existing designs for the components like condensers evaporators and uh, 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 other heat exchangers so here with the help of 1d 3d system uh, level approach uh, users can uh, users have a freedom to look at it, the the existing designs for uh, the seat actions like condensers, evaporators, and radiators, and it is part of the whole uh, system, which is modeled as a 1D uh, using a sim center solution called AMSIM. So here you can have a, a seamless uh, uh, connection between the 1D system analysis uh, with the 3, 3D component level analysis by embedded CFD, which is which is available as part of the 1D system analysis. So here uh, we can see uh, how the size and shape, um, the sizing and position of these uh, heat exchangers like condensed evaporators are impacting uh, the, the overall performance of the system, like in this case, how it is affecting the engine performance because the radiator intercoolers, if you position, if you, if you play around with the sizing and the position of these systems and also the, on the other hand, if you're changing uh, uh, the positions and the sizes of the condensed and evaporators, how it is affecting your the passenger thermal comfort uh, as a system. So all these things can be easily uh, <clears throat> evaluated at the early stage of the design. Uh, whenever uh, there is a uh, uh, need for uh, modeling, uh, uh, evaluating a new design at the system level uh, analysis. <clears throat> So to do that, uh, uh, one, one, uh, the AMSIM have uh, libraries for heat exchanger uh, as part of the assembly tool. Then uh, uh, using these libraries, uh, you can do this uh, heat exchanger stacking analysis uh, by, by 1D and 3D uh, level analysis. Um, not <clears throat> apart from that, you can also have, uh, even though it's 1D analysis, it's, uh, it have uh, other nice features like you can see uh, the 3D component level um, simulation results by visualizing them uh, in a 3D level in 3D fashion while you're doing uh, 1D analysis for the whole system. And, um, and also uh, there are a couple of, couple of other ways of modeling the heat exchangers within the uh, 1D system analysis. Like if you have a, a if you, have, if you perform the test uh, for heat exchangers like condensers, evaporators, radiators, intercoolers, you can get the data uh, into one day system analysis in AMSIM, and then you can see how by uh, by inputting the data to your model in the one day analysis or one day system, you can see how it is affecting the overall system uh, performance. On the other hand, you can also have a functional uh, heat exchanger models where you want you uh, you have a desired out. A result at upfront, and you can tweak your uh, heat exchanger performance according to your desired uh, performance uh, considerations or requirements. So, and also you can see whether uh, the desired uh, or the predefined performance uh, or metric like efficiency is achieved or not by tweaking the model. Um, and also, you can do uh, the tangent effects of uh, heat, heat, exchanger, uh, heat exchanger models uh, and also. Um, how these transient effects can uh, impact the heat exchange efficiency by using all these uh, heat exchanger models. So uh, within the MSM, you can, you can model uh, the heat exchange like gas gas, which is <clears throat> uh, for the case of intercoolers and uh, other type of heat exchangers, liquid gas, which is for the radiator, refrigerant gas for the condenser and evaporators. And also along with these type of heat exchangers, there are libraries to model uh, components like fan and grill and engine block so that you can you can get the holistic picture of the whole uh, system uh, by doing the 1D level analysis. Another example uh, where uh, 1D and 3D system level analysis is used for, from the aerospace application. Uh, here we see uh, the ECS uh, uh, configuration is modeled or ECS pack is modeled as a 1D model. Uh, the environmental control system of, uh, of aircraft. And here, unlike the other example of the automotive where you have a, you have a standard configuration and then um, for, from, for the new design of the vehicle and then 
you are trying to uh, see what is the performance of your existing uh, your heat exchanger models. But in this case, uh, you hear uh, two different uh, architectures or configurations for ECS are compared um, by keeping uh, a, a 3D uh, model for heat exchanger. So you can see uh, give for a given uh, uh, heat exchanger model, uh, which is modeled as a 3D uh, in a 3D analysis and how it is uh, performing uh, in two different architectures and two different configurations. And you can compare the, uh, the performance of configurations by looking at the pressure losses and mass flows uh, as the, the performance metrics. And this is the uh, success story from a company called Leonardo Aircraft and we used MSM uh, for 1D analysis and used 3D, 3D uh, so stasis and plus for 3D analysis. And uh, they, they will be able to reduce the uh, the cost for the physical testing and also they have uh, saved time uh, which is uh, invested for the development phase and also it helped uh, this kind of approach one this is 3d system level approach you help them to minimize the certification test because uh, you, um, if you have a limited number of configurations you can you can you can reduce the certification test and also uh, it can help to minimize the redesigning of some of the parts and the cost associated with the uh, those redesigning of the parts uh, at the manufacturing phase. Okay, so design exploration and optimization needs of heat exchange. So, so far we have seen uh, the applications at the 3D component level and 1D and 3D system level of way of doing and performing simulations. Uh, sometimes uh, uh, it's, it's decided to find optimal design uh, uh, with regard to the uh, performance of the heat exchanger uh, in terms of the efficiency or, uh, or the pressure loss on the uh, cold side. So here we see a heat, heat pump from thermal lift and thermal lift used uh, integrated automotive op optimization and then it helped them uh, to find a design which can uh, help them help them to reduce 30 to 50 percent and the a cost for heating and cooling consumption, energy consumption. Um, and also, um, again, uh, like the, the previous example, uh, this cost, uh, the Thermo Lift as a company, uh, have seen significant uh, benefit uh, by reducing the risk and cost uh, by eliminating the bad design because the design, design space exploration can give you optimal designs, good designs or better designs. And so that you can reduce always the risk and cost associated with the bad designs, and, and eventually you can avoid them avoid a physical prototyping for the bad designs. So uh, yeah, if the, this thermo typically the thermo uh, uh, lifts uh, a design for heat pump includes several heat exchangers. Uh, uh, one is called cold heat exchanger and the heat ex warm heat exchangers and the hot heat exchangers. So all these heat exchangers are, uh, uh, the designs for all these uh, heat exchangers are uh, explored and, uh, and eventually uh, using the heat uh, thermal lift to be able to find an optimal design for the final version, which helped them to reduce the 50% of the energy, uh, the cost associated with the energy. Next example we have is uh, electronic cooling design. Uh, here, um, is in this example, what you see is uh, ethylene glycol uh, uh, cooled uh, uh, board, electronic board, uh, where the idea or the challenge is to minimize the chip temperature. So we see the baseline design having a hot spot of 125 degrees. And um, so the, dis the dimples are, uh, uh, the baseline design have five, five dimples and then uh, using the design space exploration using heat and star system plus, one could able to find an optimal design where it can help to reduce the chip temperature by 13 degrees. So here we can see uh, 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 the dimples are changed uh, by, by using the design variables like number of pins and size and spacing of the pins and also the tapper for the heat exchanger pins. Uh, which, uh, when ex uh, exposed to the, uh, the ethylene glycol uh, running on the top of the, uh, the the chip, it can uh, so the, the optimal design can help to reduce the chip temperature by 13, 13 degrees. So, yeah. 
So this is the optimal design which helped to you know, reduce the 13 degrees from the baseline design of 21 to 20 degrees. Yeah, with that, uh, this is the time to take question and answers. Thank you. Yeah, so there's a question. Can we use heat with flow of D? Um, yeah, you can use it, but as I said, the flow of D have uh, its own design space exploration. Uh, uh, you can you can get um, a similar result, a similar exploration using the inbuilt uh, integrated design space exploration in the flow of D. But for optimization purposes, yeah, you can, you can couple heat with the flow of D. That's possible. Please feel free to put your questions in the chat window so that I'm happy to answer your questions. Thank you. 